The parents' responsibility towards themselves. Can't even the vital point. Because since um, all of the interactions, since we know now that all of the interactions we have as parents to children are um, on a soul to soul level, they're emotional. Um, if parents aren't observing their own responsibility to themselves and their relationship with God and their emotions, then essentially they're teaching their child just through, the, through their emotions. So if you don't understand your own free will, for example, then, then how is your child going to understand what free will is? Also, you need to remember in each interaction that you do have free will. The parent needs to learn and understand this. Because quite often I see when we start talking about this stuff with children, I've had some children sort of in the teenage years say, well, mum and dad, you've caused all of our problems. You know, we've got all these emotional injuries because of you. Now you've got to buy me an ice cream when I go down there, <laughs> you know, like using it as bribery. And, and I've seen some of those children actually go down the, road, down the ice cream, you know, buying all these things in the supermarket and throwing it in the trolley and expecting the mother to pay for it. Now, the mother has free will too. So she can actually take out the items out of the trolley <laughs> at, the, at the front desk and say, I'm not paying for those, my daughter is. And, oh, you don't have any money. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like we're not buying that. Because mo the mother has free will as well, right? You see, often what happens is that anger, anger projected at a child for doing something comes from the parent feeling like they can't, they can't exercise their own free will in the situation. So as parents, it's very important to understand you can exercise your free will. It's not loving to do it angrily, but it is loving to do it. So for another example I would give is like, um, I knew a, a family who the boys just left their clothes strewn all over the house. And the mother was constantly having arguments with them, put away your clothes, put away your clothes, you know. I'm not washing your clothes. And she'd get quite angry with them, you know. And, and then she, because she's sick and tired of her house being dirty, she'd go around in a whirlwind and pick up all their clothes and dump it on their floor. And, and that didn't fix anything either because next week they still <laughs> strewed around all their clothes again. And, and it just kept on happening and happening and happening. And she just kept on getting more and more angry. But she has free will. She doesn't, she, she doesn't think she has free will in that situation. So what, what she could actually do, and these were adult boys, what she could actually do is gather all the clothes and just take it down the second hand store. You know, and give them to the second hand store. And just say to them, can you keep them there for a week? Can you put a price on all of them? Keep them there for a week and I'll tell my boys where to find them and what the price is. And you will have the price on them, right? And just leave them there like that. Right? And wait, and when the boys say, where's my clothes, mum? Oh, uh, well, they're not here anymore. <laughs> Where are they gone? Oh, well, you, you didn't put them away, so I took them down to the second hand store. <laughs> you mustn't want them anymore, you know? And just allow the child now to work through the issue. You don't have to be angry about it, do you? In fact, if you're angry about it, you're not being loving about it anyway. Yeah. But going around and picking things up and, you know, Martyr, in a martyrdom sort of a way, is not really loving either. So. Okay. so the key thing is to every one of these things would be just to teach to teach the truth of them. So what, what in that case we'd want to teach the child self responsibility, right? Which we'll look at a bit later in our sessions. But you know that's one way we could do it. But if we, as soon as we do it with anger or rage or you know any of those feelings, straight away we're at harmony anyway, aren't we? With love. So we'd need to address that emotion within us first before we did it. But we can easily do it. And, and the lady actually said in this discussion that I had with her, she said, well, would you tell them first that you're going to do that? And I said, no. And the reason why is because, you know, usually as parents, we've already talk, told them, can you please pick up the stuff a hundred times before? Usually that's the case, isn't it? And the reason why they're not acting is because they don't think we will act. Does that make sense? So in other words, they're not respecting our free will to act. And I'm allowed to act as a parent independent of what my child wants. Right? If it's in harmony with love. And that situation would be. Does that make sense? So there's plenty of things we can do just to, to use our free will. Now, as it turned out in that discussion, that, that 
person I was discussing that principle with said I could never do that, that's really cruel. <laughs> so what was influencing her free will was this belief that she would be a bad mother if she did that. Does that make sense? And she didn't want to deal with that emotion. So she would rather pick up after her, her children, her male children, every single time, rather than deal with that emotion that she was a bad mum. The truth is that she was teaching her children a very important principle, and that is I can use my mum whenever I want to do whatever I want. And not only that, she was teaching them because they were boys that they can treat women this way. So there's some really, really large principles she was teaching them but she thought it would be cruel to do anything different because of the avoidance of her own emotion. So can you see how free will, the parents' free will, is very important? 